I think we, we, one of the challenges we have had is lamenting but not looking forward. And I, I know there's been a challenge in that area, but I think I have mentioned names here and we know musicians. South Seoul was not created by government. Masi Masika is not a government or she was not given some support by government. Uh, there are people who are using their talent and finding the niche in the marketplace by their own hard work pace. But just I think to throw the problem it in there, has been just to throw it in there, Saudi Soul, the good example you have brought up, has been silenced somewhat by the government uh, how, in some ways in terms of the music that they would and how play. Which music? <laughs> you see now, let, let, let me tell you. To be fair. Because the media perpetuates this ignorance, because we have never banned one South Soul song, but that's what is on the record out there, and you are now saying it on this forum. So allow me to correct it. We work with South Soul, we work with Churchill, we work with Chipukizi, we are cre working with creatives and supporting them. In fact, as it stays now, we are even uh, standing in as a collateral for the youths who are creative. They bring a script to KFCB. We see this can become a good film and we support them to go to the youth fund and get money. And we are working on an MOU with the youth fund to enable them get money. You know, 300, 500. People like Dr. Ezekiel Onyango here, and the guy is a doctor for real, you know, it's not a government policy. <laughs> the, the creatives, Nollywood is not government policy. Hollywood is not government policy. We've got to think about uh, what Kennedy, JF Kennedy said. Not what your country can do for you, but also what you can do for your country. Find the opportunities, understand the environment, look at your talent and your purpose in life, and who do you need for you to prosper? Because I look at some of those guys like Bahati from Uruma slums, who is now a celebrity and making money, and I have so many from my own area in Ukambani, whom we are supporting. I think not, not just right, because they are Ukambani. You make a point, yes. Good evening. I would like to interject. Um, we actually, we, I'm Gloria Oruba from Somo, and uh, we come with solutions. And um, the NGO that um, I represent, basically, what we do is we build social enterprises in the low income areas. And just to, you know, carry on with your point, we do actually try as much as possible to be the people who are presenting solutions. So we train entrepreneurs, we fund entrepreneurs in low-income areas, and they come out with these very exciting enterprises, some of them in the creative industry. The problem comes when we actually are trying to get government support in the areas that we operate in. So for instance, a very basic thing is when we are out in the slums and we're trying to even have a hall to train them in these business skills, we, it's just to get the chief to give us permission, just to have policies in there from government to basically say, okay, we're going to come into this social impact blockchain and help those who are you know, providing solutions. My question to government and also to Waziri would be, you know, what are the systems that the government is putting in place to help organizations like SOMO? All right, so just to add on, I see Antonio Sol sitting right next to you. Yeah. Hi, Anto. What's up? Now, there's a lot that Dr. Ezekiel has said about the support that, you know, the government is giving the creative industry. What do you have to say about that? Um, first, also, I'm also, I, I'm not, I'm not self-made. I think everyone is a, is a product of God somehow. And I come from Kawangware, which is obviously a slum. And to get to where I've gotten to, it's also taken a lot of hard work. My biggest issue with not just, um, Dr. Mutua, is that I feel even here today, is that I feel like we're, we're presenting a, a CV. Everyone is saying that, you know, this is what we are doing, this is the industry that we're in, this is what needs to be done. And my biggest issue is that we're forgetting that a very high percentage of youth and of Kenyans are unemployed. So we are presenting a CV to unemployed people and it sort of comes out like we are bragging. I know Bahati, I know Saudi Soul, they've done this. but. What about, what, about, what about the fact that I have to write a pitch that is nine pages for you to be able to give me funding to get young people and for me to be able to mentor young people? What about those young people? And that's, I think it's a thing with Kenyans. We like to name drop a lot. But what about the namelesses who are not necessarily nameless? What about those people? But Anto, I mean, you do have to fill in those forms. I, I, there would be no yes, shortcut the, for you to get funds. You but have I, what I'm trying to say is, is as Anto, 
I have to do that and have to knock those doors. What about the people that I'm trying to help from Dagureti, from, from Kawangware? Imagine how far they have to go. That if for them to make an impact in your office, they have to be known. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Tari, do you want to respond Can to that? Um, okay. Uh, Marcus? Becca, I think it's the same issue uh, I, I was pointing to earlier. Uh, uh, and she has the funds cannot be enough, certainly. But we can have structures that make it easier. And those are the youth she's talking about. We have a youth fund. How many can actually go to that door, knock it, and get the funds to support the venture that they have in place? And I appreciate that Dr. Mtua has gotten into an understanding where they give collateral for them to access that. But how many will also go through here to get collateral through that to get that to happen. But I also want to acknowledge what the government is doing, special economic zones that are being created uh, as we speak. If you were reading the news today, you would realize that there are special economic zones that are going to be created in places outside of the urban cities so that we can also have employment created there by having investors come in. So we have got to also appreciate that, but it's, it was a long way coming because these are areas that will create employment. But when we have special economic zones created, that means we have got to think automation, robotization. Do we have these capabilities among our youth? Yes, I mean, I can see that. But Again, the government is putting in place an internship program, a national internship program, with the realization that we need to transition the youth from school to work by closing a gap in between so that they can get realities of being in a workplace. And that is being led by the ministry, I mean, by Public Service Commission and the CSS ministry. So that's a positive from the government as well.